Hey, it's Darian. I can't quite figure out how to piece control. Can you please upload a longer tutorial? <laughs> Hi hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be talking all about peace control. Yes, you heard that correctly. This entire video will be dedicated to my favorite Fortnite concept in the world, peace control. As I'm sure you all know, I've already made a few different videos on this topic, but they were more so smaller pieces to larger videos like how to box fight or how to W key. So after seeing all of the peace control memes in my replies on Twitter, I'm not gonna lie, they are pretty funny. I thought it was about time that I make a full out peace control guide. Basically what I'm gonna do is explain what peace control actually is, show some examples of it, teach you guys some more advanced peace control techniques that I can almost guarantee none of you have ever seen before, and finally finish off with different ways how you can improve your own peace control. So I hope you're as excited as I am, I could literally talk about peace control forever. Without further ado, let's get right on into it. To start off, what the heck is peace control? Well, according to Bala TW, who actually coined the term, it is the act of owning nearby build pieces to control the fight. Let's take a look at two very basic examples to help you guys better understand it. Alright, so for the first example, we have Bucky. He just shockwaved onto high ground, is about to build battle this guy, gets a nice cone off, two walls, and an easy elimination. That is beautiful. Let me play this back in slow-mo really quickly. This way, I can actually break down the peace control that went on. So so the first thing we see is this cone right here. Let me pause it and circle the cone. That cone is going to prevent his opponent from going up. Pretty textbook stuff. Then we have this wall right here, which is really important because as you'll see in a second, it allows him to edit it open and wall off his opponent on both sides. He gets this wall and this wall. The guy has nowhere to go because he already has the cone as well. Bucky took control of every building piece around him, three walls and a cone, and therefore gets rewarded with the elam. Here's another example, again from BBG Bucky. He's a top tier pro and box fighter. You see him take the wall, get off a nice pump shot. He unfortunately does not secure it, but due to his peace control, he ends up getting the kill. Now the first bit of peace control we see is this move right here. He builds a wall, edits it open, places a cone, and all that does is prevent his opponent from editing out because if he does, Bucky has the kill. So right after that we saw the Mongrel Classic. This technically counts as peace control because he's building a stair instead of his opponent's cone, therefore taking control of a possible building piece. However, the real peace control is what happens after this right as his opponent edits down. So he edits down, he builds two walls around him as well as a cone and this allows him to edit the wall on the right which he does have ownership of for an easy elimination with a mongrel classic. This is different than your normal peace control because he's not necessarily blocking his opponent off. I know he kind of did with the ramp there but the real peace control comes from the fact that he had ownership of the wall and he can then edit it open. As you just saw from those two examples, peace control is really really useful. It helps you end fights faster, protect yourself when need be, and create opportunities for eliminations that you normally would not get. To put it simply, peace control is the meta in Season 4. It is what separates the average sweat who can build and edit fast from a top tier pro player that consistently places in tournaments. Any elite fighter you watch in Chapter 2 Season 4 is really really good because of their peace control. Take Reed for example. Reed is the pro player that I've been showing in these clips with the focus and while he's not the fastest builder or editor, he, in my opinion, has the best peace control in the world. Now, there are a lot of different tips I can give you to improve your peace control and to get it as good as reads. Some examples are staying aware of the grid system, predicting your opponent's next moves, and of course, watching its Jarian. The thing about that, though, is I feel like most of you guys know that stuff already. You're not Season 7 noobs who need your handheld with basic tips. What you need are pro building techniques to help you establish peace control that I learned from Reet. These are moves that he's perfected and crafted for months that I kind of stole after watching his videos. All of them have helped my peace control improve tremendously and hopefully will do the same for you. Before I get to any new ones, I quickly want to recap three of the techniques I showed in my W key video. These ones I technically saw first from Calc, but because Reed has better peace control, I'm going to give him the clout this time. Seriously, let's get into some of these techniques. Up first, we're joined on board with Young Calc, who is currently box fighting his opponent. I believe this clip is from last season, but even still, oh my gosh, that peace control is disgusting. In case you missed it, I will play it again really quickly. All you're looking for though, this cone that he placed right above his opponent's head. 
that ends up being the only reason he wins the fight so quickly. The way this move, which I'm gonna call the Calcone, I know Calc did not discover it first. All the creative kitties got really mad at me when I said he did. All you do is put your crosshair right above the top of the wall, and if I place it, you can see it comes out on the other side of the wall, therefore establishing peace control on the guy over here. Say there's a guy on the other side of the wall, cone it, open it up, box him up for peace control, all because of that cone. Another use case which I've seen from Calc in game is he'll do a side jump, cone it, open it up, easy peace control. Second move, again from the young calculator, can be seen in this clip. He's just box fighting the guy, going for different shots. The dude is being really annoying to kill. Luckily, Calc knows peace control and ends the fight much faster than he would without it. In my opinion, this is the best of the three basic peace control techniques because of how insanely versatile it is. All you need to do is look to the right or left, depending on which side they edit out of, place a cone, a floor, jump up on it, edit through both, cone and walls on each side, and you get an easy elimination. I know I keep saying that, but I'm not kidding. Peace control makes everything so easy. Imagine you're in a box fight, you edit out, jump up, snap over, peace control like I just showed, and you get a free shot. This is probably the most fun technique to practice because you're just editing and building, doing a little double edit. That is move numero dos. Third and final of the calc techniques, even though this clip is from my boy Reet. You can tell because he's wearing the vision skin. He's W keying, desperately trying to kill this guy when he whips out the peace control and gets it like it's nothing. All of my hardcore viewers might be a little angry because that's not the exact one I showed in my video with Calc. The way I did it there was you build a wall next to your opponent, edit a window, quickly snap your crosshair up and down to place cones on the top and bottom, and finish off with two walls. The way Reet does it is he will stay on the unit in front of his opponent's box, look off to the left or right, place the wall, edit it open, and just place a cone there. Thinking about this now, I guess this is a little safer because if your opponent does not edit out this way, you did not waste these extra extra build pieces like calc does, plus you can still pressure the front of their box and if they do edit out, boom, boom, easy kill. Both moves are very very good, it kinda just depends where your opponent is and how well you can read them. If I do not know where this guy is editing out from, put the wall, the cone, then I see him editing, finish it off like calc, however if I know for sure he's editing out this way, hit him with the original move, easy clap. Remember, those are the three piece control techniques that I showed last time. You all should already have them mastered. Let's now move on to the more advanced stuff. Back again with another season three calc clip. This one has the technique I wanna show you guys. It's not new, there it is right there, but it's so useful. As you can see in slow motion, Calc is coming out of a high ground retake. When he does this staggered double wall 180, he gets a cone off in the middle of the second wall, then window edits the top wall, gets the guy with the peace control on the cone, and secures the elimination. This other example is from Reet. He's coming from the low ground this time. He gets off this ridiculous high wall, the cone again, not a window edit, but still, that move is ridiculous. This move is nothing new, I'm not saying it's new, however, most of the time, it's used in high ground retakes like that. You then open up the top wall, get peace control on the guy. The way Reet uses it though is why it's so insanely smart. Rather than trying to ramp over his opponent like most people would, Reet opts to go for this high wall like this. That way from his opponent's POV, they'll be building up, thinking they have ownership of this wall. Reed already has this established, and can just edit it open, place a cone. And that just kinda goes to show how versatile this move is, because the way Reet used it was he was doing a cone jump, built two walls like that, then because his opponent was here, Reet got off the cone and outplayed him, while the dude could not do anything, I think he tried to build a floor, that piece control though left him out to dry. Here is one final example of this high wall strat, I think he does it like four times in this clip so you're really gonna see how he uses it, right there is one, right there is another, he gets the cone, right there is another, 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 I think that was five times. He actually did not get to catch the guy with it. All of those high walls, the guy just jumped to his death. He knows Reet is a peace control god. Second of the advanced peace control tricks, we can see in this fight from Reet, he goes for a shot. Nice protected retake. He again chops the guy out, goes for a sick pre-wall placement, almost like a pre-peace control. He then edits it, gets the cone off. Lastly, finishes off with a nice shot, tack 50-50, and he wins it. The move that 
I want you all to focus on is what happens the second time he chops the guy out. This part right here. Notices he places the wall, gets off the cone after the window edit, all before the guy even lands. It's ridiculous. Since I'm showing my favorite controller players, I gotta throw in Unknown, who for some reason is fighting against a bot. It doesn't really matter though because he uses this trick. Unknown places the wall before he drops, gets off the cone, but he does not get the far wall. Regardless, it's unknown, he steals the wall on zero ping, and gets the kill. The reason I'm calling this pre-peace control is because most of the time, the way you use peace control is reactive. For example, one of the base clips I showed, if I see this guy editing out to the side, I'm gonna react to it by placing this cone and floor and editing it open. What Unknown and Reet did there was actually different. They put that peace control before the opponent fell, they built the wall, edited it open, and then placed a cone on the floor. That way this player would fall, he would have nowhere to build because he cannot build a wall that's a known's wall that's been edited he cannot build a ramp that cone is there because a known placed it all he can do is try to run out to the side which any good player would just place two walls because they watch its jerrion boom you are dead from what i've seen from both unknown and reet the most effective way to do this it's obviously only useful if you're chopping or shooting someone out and they're falling down onto you i would say go for the top row edit and of course follow it up with the cone the window edit which reet used is just as useful it's just that falling player could technically catch themselves on it with a floor. With a top row edit, they cannot, and they're basically dead. There's no counter to this. I actually just found this clip, which is from the same game the other one is with Unknown. I want to show it though because he goes for the pre-peace control right there, but as you saw, his opponent was able to build up because he did not go for the top row edit. That's proof the top row edit is alpha for this technique. Go for the top row edit. For the last technique, which is more of a tip, we have a tiny little clip from Arkram. He's building up at his opponent, goes for the peace control, right there beautiful walls that's one of the basic techniques i showed why i'm showing it though is because i want you guys to notice the edit he makes arkram could easily edit both tiles of the floor up however he only edits one on the right side therefore giving him a beautiful right hand peek he's basically hidden from his opponent's point of view the guy doesn't even know where he is anyways and then Arkham finishes him off. I don't know why he jumped in the guy's box. That was actually kind of stupid. The takeaway though is that just like your box fighting edits, how you always want them to be right hand peaks and optimal, the same exact thing applies for establishing peace control. Let's say you're in a box, someone comes down on a ramp right here. You could easily place a cone by editing the top row and placing a cone, right? Well, from your opponent's point of view, that is really dumb because it will get an easy shot on you. You gotta remember what I just said. Use optimal and right hand peaks to use peace control. So instead of making this edit, how about you make a right hand window edit, place the cone, there's no way to shoot you, and you get the cone off. Additionally, what if you want to place walls on all of their sides? Should you do this edit? Probably not. Instead, you can make a top right corner edit, reset quickly, you can make a door edit like that, and that placed. There are a lot of different options. You just do not want to limit yourself to these bad peaks just because you're establishing peace control. Use right hand peaks for establishing peace control. To wrap up the video, I'm going to talk about a few different ways how you can improve your own peace control. First up is in any blank world, just start free building and working in all the different peace control techniques. That could be one of the basic moves. It could also be the advanced stuff. Literally just take whichever move, the Calc Classic right there. You just want to get used to these moves, that way in real games, it's all muscle memory. Second way is to load up Raider 464's Peace Control map, which I'll put on the screen right now. It's basically a big map with a bunch of pre-built structures, and all you do is establish peace control on everything. This one is really fun just for warming up. It's not as good for practicing the techniques I just showed because you don't really have room to, as you can see I'm running into things. However, it's really good for practicing basic peace control. Just stuff like cones and walls, re-edits. Jerry and Doobie peace control him though. Then the last and final way to improve your peace control is to load up Will's peace control map, which I showed in my warm up video. Here it is. Code will be on the screen. This guy named Will actually made this entire map just for me. All of these drills are from this video. I can't show them all in this video because that would take way too long. Go watch my warm up video if you want to see the full tutorial. Just know this map is awesome. There's even a drill specifically for this. 
So if you're too lazy to do any peace controls yourself while free building, come to this map. It is Will's peace control map, code in the description, specifically made for its Jarian and all its Jarian subscribers. Overall guys, that is my ultimate guide to peace control in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4. Definitely go check out Reet down below. The kid is an absolute beast and the best peace controller in the game. Also let me know down below which technique was your favorite as well as any I may have missed out on. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jerrion. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm doing my best to respond to people on Twitter and Instagram who use my code that's the best way to get a shout out i'm usually pretty active on twitter not so much on instagram so i apologize for not responding just know i really do appreciate all of you guys otherwise that's it from me and i will see you guys in the next one later